Welcome to Think Tech on OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Raya Salter. And I'm Elise Anderson. In our show this time, we'll take you on a trip we made to a number of energy and sustainability projects on Kauai. That included tours of green energy, Hawaii dairy farms, the Tesla solar and battery facility, and visits with some VIPs at Kauai County. We flew into Kauai on Friday, April 7th. First, we met Beth Tokioka, Communications Director for Kauai Island Utility Cooperative, KIUC, the electric utility on Kauai. We're going to take you down to Green Energy, uh, our biomass plant, which is relatively new to our portfolio, but an important part of our renewable portfolio. Spend some time with those folks. We're going to show you our Tesla plant. Um, that is a really exciting project for us, as you know, that um, we had the blessing about a month ago. And uh, that is going to be online very shortly for us, providing 13 megawatts for roughly four hours in the evening. So storing that all that solar that we have. Working with the county on a number of things, one of them was retrofitting all of our streetlights. So we, I believe, are the first county in the state to be running now on all LED streetlights. And it's, you know, again, not only great for the environment, but it's going to save the county, I think, somewhere in the neighborhood of $400,000 a year on their energy bill to run the streetlights. Sometimes if one entity can show the others, you know, it can kind of blaze the trail um, and show others that it can be done and, and others can learn from from our experience and that's a good thing. I think in Hawaii that's a really great thing. Sometimes other islands can learn from Kauai, sometimes we can learn from what's happening on Oahu or, or Maui or the Big Island, but that's a nice thing in our state. I think we're all, we're small enough, we're all connected. Um, we share information, we try to learn from each other. On Kauai, you know, we're, we're doing, we have partners like Grow Farm, who uh, they are hosting the Tesla facility, the Tesla uh, leases that land from Grow Farm. Um, we also have a solar field in Kaloa that's on Grow Farm land. They've been a really important partner for us. They have lots and lots of land. Um, the land that we're that we're utilizing is agriculturally zoned, but they have lots more agricultural land. So you know it's an important thing to strike a balance. Um, between, uh, for example, agricultural land using how much of it for energy production, how much do you want to use for food production? So this is this is the issue of um, this is the issue of our time, and it's any island issue. Is what will the land use be as we try and walk towards a sustainable future? And it sounds like, in addition to the technology, you guys are having to have these community conversations that I also think that other islands and other parts of the world can ultimately learn from. Yes, absolutely. And I think, you know, so we want to be sensitive to that. So that's why we have to look at all different types of technology. And, and part of our challenge is not moving too quickly. You know, I mean, at this point in time, I suppose we could look at, you know, a strategy of just putting solar farms, you know, as many as we could out there and, and reaching 100% that way. But we actually have um, a policy in place or a guideline that we will only add so much renewable every year because we want to be able to be responsive in the future to new technologies, um, to new types of uh, systems that we could that we could consider. We don't want to move too fast. There's that, there's kind of that sweet spot of moving as quickly as you can, but then not too fast that you miss important opportunities. Then we drove to Green Energy near Lihui and met with Abraham Costa and his team for a really interesting tour of the seven megawatt biomass to energy facility there. This is the first closed loop uh, biomass plant in the nation. And uh, what that means is we take um, from the seedlings, you know, from the seeds, we grow the plant, we grow the big trees, we cut it down, makes chips, brings it to the facility, we burn the wood chips, heats the boiler, makes steam, steam turbine, then power out to the grid. The wood is Albizia? Yes, we're doing Albizia right now, it's an invasive species that we're, um, we're chopping all those trees down now and then we're actually growing eucalyptus. All right, we're going to go to the unloading base, which on this side. Uh, that's where the chips are unloaded. From there, there's an automatic crane. Uh, the crane takes it into the boiler. And then we'll go inside the boiler house, look at the fuel belts. Then from the fuel belts, we'll look inside the boiler through the viewing windows. And then we'll go look at the turbine and the generator. Well, we've been actually in service uh, commercially for about a year and three months. They built it from the, the ground up, a uh, European company from Germany. Um, SKG. We have our automatic fuel crane. So we have four trucks 
with the uh, walking floors. And what it does is our plantation, they cut the trees down, they chip it, and they drop it off over here. And this crane will work all day unloading it into the fuel hall. And then from the fuel hall, it puts it in a hopper. It's got screws in it, goes on the belts, and the, from the belts into the boiler. Now, right now, we are running at capacity. We're running at 6.7 megawatts right now. Um, the plant is capable of doing about 8.3 megawatts out to the utility. This is our trailers from the plantation. We do roughly about 16 trailers a day. The trucks are walking floors, so the, the wood chips just walk themselves right out the back. We replant all the trees. So on the areas that we cut down, we'll clean the area out, they'll replant from seedlings, and then we'll put eucalyptus. And from the belts, the fuel chips will fall down in there. If you see, there's two viewing windows, and you can actually see the wood chips falling into the chutes. The original cost is about 90 million to build this place. The boiler has a walking floor on it as well, which is angled down, and the floor walks. So the wood chips get pushed inside, they light on fire, and then they slowly walk themselves down the, the grates until it burns out, until it becomes ash. And then the ash, we recycle the ash, and the ash is taken back up to the plantation fertilizer. For fertilizer. Yeah, so we go from the little seedling to the ash, and everything goes right back to the plantation. This is the main combustion page, and then we have different training screens that we utilize. Um, tell us what's going on, and I have an alarm page down there, which I can acknowledge that right here. So well, those are the wood chips. That's the yeah. consistency of what goes in, yeah? Yes. It's called SCADA, which is Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. So I supervise by basically watching and then doing control, like changing load um, and data acquisition, doing trending. We adjust it according to what KIEC wants. If KIEC says we want 4.2 megawatts, we'll give them 4.2 megawatts. Or if they ask for 7.5, we give them 7.5 megawatts. Also automated. Yes, they just punch in the number and everything does its thing. You can manually sync it to the grid as well from here. Ah. We like to keep hands off. We just automated press a button let the system do its job what this does right here this is an electric static precipitator so there's air that's blown into the boiler you know to stoke the fire make the fire and then there's a big id fan that keeps a slight negative pressure on the boiler so it sucks all that flue gas out and it comes out here and it goes into this electric static precipitator and what that does it's high voltage plates and it's 50,000 volts in the, all the particles, all the dust stick to those plates. And so the flue gas comes out the stack and it comes out clean out the top. We got everything going into the other side through the boiler up through a um, technology that takes the carbon and the sock, the NOx and the socks right out of it. And then voila, here what you have is electricity that goes to the electric cooperative here, KIUC. After that, we went to Hawaii Dairy Farms at Maha Ulebu and met with Amy Hennessy and Jim Garments to see what's going on there. It's quite beautiful. Tell us a little bit about the farm and what we're going to see today. Sure. Well, it's about 557 acres, um, and we're proposing a pasture-based dairy. It's the first of its kind in the islands, and it has uh, rotational grazing. We have the herd broken up into six different groups, and we rotate them through a series of pastures. So they um, eat the grass as their natural feed. They leave behind natural fertilizer that helps the grass to grow, and then it's a nice virtuous cycle for the farm to exist. Great, and this is towards um, greater sustainability for the island, yes? yes. It's food security and um, hopefully creating a dairy farm that's going to help to provide uh, 1.2 million gallons a year for everybody to drink. As I understand, there aren't any cattle here now, mm -hmm. but that what you're looking to do is establish a pastoral, a, su a sustainable, renewable pastoral system of, um, of raising cattle and having a dairy so that um, these, and you're preparing, and these pastures are being prepared for that new kind of system. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about that? Sure, yeah. So, um, so we are growing a whole bunch of grass right now. We're doing grass trials to understand oh. how the grass is growing in this particular area to make sure that we have enough feed for the cows. And then the idea was to try to use the pastoral model to get away from the reliance on imported feed and fertilizer for the cows. Got it. Yeah, so it's a much, it's a lower cost model. It's better for the environment. It uses the natural resources that we have. The cow's manure is a great fertilizer. Um, so we recycle those nutrients onto the pasture to grow the grass and then they get to eat the grass as their feed. So why, why do you have, why are you cutting the grass if you want to grow the grass? 
Oh, so it's important to cut the grass. We're doing an 18 day rotation like we would if the cows were on pasture eating the grass so that we can um, see how the grass performs, what's the nutrient value. Um, so we want to keep that rotation and we don't want it to get overgrown too because if the grass gets too tall, it loses its nutrient value. So what's the timetable? Well, that's a really good question. We're in the process of um, doing a second EIS to um, respond to community comments and um, questions from the regulators. So we hope to submit that for review and comment um, sometime this year. I can't give you a definite time because some of these things take time. Um, and then our hope is to be through the permitting regulatory process and in construction in the next couple years. Yeah. yeah. So when all that's through, when all that's done, how do you see this place? In your mind's eye, what's it going to look like? How is it going to function? Oh, this is going to be beautiful. It's going to be green pastures, really idyllic, um, with cows dotting the landscape and different pastures, just enjoying the grass. And, um, and it'll just be a really peaceful, serene, beautiful place to be. Um, I'm jealous of the cows. I'd love to hang out here every day. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pull for milk. Pull for milk. Pull for milk. <laughs> You've been in the dairy business for 35 years. You went to school. Your family was in the dairy business. What is it about the dairy business that attracts you and your family for all these years and keeps you with it even now? What is it? Like the cows. After a break for lunch, we visited with John Yoshimura and Nick Clements at the 13-megawatt, 50-acre Tesla solar farm and battery storage facility north of Lihui. What we've got here is 50 acres of solar panels, 55,000 thousand solar panels that are paired with um, more than 250 um, Tesla Powerwall systems to provide um, energy to the island of Kauai. This is a, a fantastic project for us in a partnership with Tesla. Um, Tesla, most people know that company. It's a very groundbreaking company in many ways, but they've partnered with us to put up a, a large uh, solar plus battery storage facility here in Kapaya. So this facility is located on 50 acres of grow farmland, and it's got a whole bunch of solar panels and a whole bunch of batteries. And basically what this facility will do will help us move our solar energy into the evening hours. So this is agricultural land. It's nice. It keeps um, ag zoned land in production and, and out of development, so to speak. Uh, it's good for the landowner, Grow Farm. Uh, and you know, the the power that's generated here, so these batteries will store 13 megawatts of power that will be fed into the grid uh, for four hours in the evening. So it's a total of 52 megawatts in the evening hours, which powers roughly 4,500 homes here on Kauai. And it makes a dent because otherwise we would be burning fossil fuel, which we don't want to do uh, if we can avoid it. So this helps us to avoid probably in the neighborhood of 1.3 million gallons of fossil fuel a year. That is incredible. And also I understand the um, arrangement that you have with Tesla and this is a little um, a little uh not unusual or unorthodox, but Tesla actually owns this facility and sells the power back, I understand, to KIUC at a rate that is cheaper than what you um, than what KIUC had paid before. Is that correct? Is there economic benefit to this project? Correct. The re the One of the beauties of this project is that because we have, so yes, Tesla built this facility. They lease the land from Grow Farm. Uh, they own all of these panels and batteries that we see here. And we executed a purchase power agreement with them for 13.9 cents per kilowatt hour, which is a very good rate for us. Um, it's lower than what we're currently paying for oil. And we probably expect oil to stay the same or maybe go up in the near future. So it helps us create a downward pressure on our rates uh, using solar energy, which, you know, a few years ago, I think a lot of folks didn't think you could deliver that kind of renewable energy uh, at a price point that was comparable or that, that made financial sense. Can you tell us a bit about, about um, the cooperative model and how, um, how that's important here when it comes to renewable energy? Absolutely, because as we talk about rates, uh, we are cooperative. We are owned by our members. We have 24,000 plus members and they're all of our customers. Uh, we all own the cooperative. This happened about 15 years ago. A gr group of businessmen here on Kauai got together and purchased the utility from uh, Citizens Utilities. So we are all member owners. Uh, we don't have a profit motive. So basically uh, any and any 
profits that we do make are returned to our members at the end of the year. So anything that we can do uh, to save money and bring more value to our members and lower their bills, we're happy to do. So this is the type of project that really helps, and it helps all people benefit from solar. Yeah, could you talk a bit about how you guys have worked with the community as you've developed these resources? Yeah, so, you know, a lot of folks in recent years have been uh, able to put solar um, solar panels and PV panels and PV uh, and batteries into their homes in order to power their own homes. But not everybody can afford to do that. Or, you know, some people rent or maybe their homes, their roofs aren't ideal for that type of thing. So not everybody has that opportunity. But as a utility and a member-owned cooperative, we feel that projects like this at a utility scale help all of our members benefit from the sun. Finally, we drove to the county office building in Lihui and met with Ben Sullivan, the Energy and Sustainability Coordinator for Kauai County, and Bernard Cavallo, the Mayor of Kauai. KAUC is doing incredible work. The County of Kauai is really very happy with the progress they're making in a, in a number of areas. Um, we're also very close partners with them. So a, a project that you know is very near and dear to my heart is the recent completion of the LED streetlights. Oh, cool. Tell us about that. Over the course of the last several years, we've been interfacing with KIUC, and, and we've both had this mutual objective of how do we get the conversion of our high-pressure sodium streetlights to LEDs. And, and right from the beginning, there was agreement that it was the right thing to do. It was going to benefit taxpayers, benefit um, members of the cooperative. But we knew it was going to take a little bit of work. Um, there was a regulatory piece we had to complete. There was, there was a numer numerous other uh, aspects of the project that needed to be worked out. Um, but we luckily have a really strong partnership with them, thanks to an agreement that Mayor Carvalho and their CEO reached a number of years ago. So the whole project moved forward and just starting last August and completing this um, just last January, they finished the installation. So we now have brand new street lights all around the island. Um, I think we reduced our energy use in, the, in that area by 70%. Wow, and what does that mean in terms of dollars? So the county will be paying $400,000 less on our electricity bill every year or thereabout. We, we did some great stuff this morning. Um, we went to Green Energy mm -hmm. to see that biomass facility. Could you perhaps tell us uh, maybe some of the county perspectives on that project? Sure. America Value was very supportive of that project and really excited to see it happen. I recall myself actually as a mem before I worked for the county or for, for KIUC, I remember as a community advocate for green energy, um, discussing that with, in, at a grassroots level in community meetings and saying, hey, what a great project. And our thinking was, hey, this is, this is a diverse solution. So it's, you know, it's, we look around today and very often it's solar or wind, right? There's very few other things happening. We thought we need to diversify and that's part of it. And this was an important piece. How are things doing in Kauai, Mayor? There's a lot of great things happening on our island and we're trying our best to um, look at all the opportunities regarding energy, regarding sustainability. We're transforming our island to walkable, bikeable, complete streets, safe routes to school, and all that kinds of opportunities to make it more healthy, encouraging people to uh, get out and about. I think that's the big part. Um, we transformed our street lights. I'm sure Ben talked about that, but there's many different projects happening at the same time. So I think we're on the brink of um, looking at different opportunities, bringing in resources, and then getting it back to the community and making our island safe and healthy. And that's a big part for me. Uh, we talked, uh, and I hope you can talk with me about the, this whole transmutation of the idea of um, kind of citizen uh, democracy with KIUC about how that also affects the county in general. And so it's like it's transmuted from one to the other and back and forth, and it's magic management. That's magic what we think about this. Aloha, all of it. And so, yeah, we have an awesome relationship with KIUC. We started off with a memorandum of understanding, came in my office. We meet once a month with the leadership team just to talk story. I got some issues you know that we need to vet out and then at the end we we go back and then come back again on a monthly basis so the memorandum of understanding signed sealed delivered and so look forward to looking at more opportunities to partner uh, with KIUC the Tesla project out here um, looking at some other renewables we're looking at the um, uh, our methane project where you can you transform the methane to energy or to fuel we're going to fuel our buses one day from the methane extracted from that landfill, and KIC is going to be involved, okay? Jay, I am so excited about our energy conference in June. We are, we are going to focus on uh, bringing resources related to local businesses and as tied to energy use. And so uh, KEDB is hosting the, the conference. This is Kauai Economic Development Board. It's going to be down on the Marriott June 19th. 
It is going to be great. It is going to be a three-track conference. We've got electricity as one track. We've got transportation, ground transportation as another track. And the third track is going to be about our low-carbon future. So we're going to be talking about things like climate change and really what an opportunity we have in terms of understanding the changes that are happening and how we can respond as businesses. Energy and sustainability are alive and well on Kauai. KIUC is effective and popular, and a model for other places. The green energy facility was quite impressive in its technology, design, scale, and contribution to clean energy in Kauai. Hawaii Dairy Farms was lovely and promising in its prospect of a return to dairy farming in Hawaii. It's so important that we all learn to understand how important local agriculture is to our self-reliance. The Tesla solar and battery facility was huge, with 54,000, yes, 54,000 solar panels and acres of high-tech battery units that will serve Kauai well. And we love talking with Ben Sullivan and Mayor Bernard Carvalho. They are great public servants for Kauai, dedicated to energy and sustainability for their island. All in all, we were left with great admiration for the people and projects we saw. Indeed, Kauai is a special island with a special community that has found a special vision for energy and sustainability. Keep up the good work, Kauai, and all of you. We'll be watching and rooting for you in the years ahead. And we want to come back again and again to follow up on your great projects and leadership going forward. It was a very successful trip. Sincere thanks to Beth Tokioka of KIUC for setting things up and helping us get around, and to Abraham Costa at Green Energy, Amy Hennessy and Jim Garmatz at Hawaii Dairy Farms, John Yoshimura and Nick Clements at the Tesla facility, and Mayor Carvalho and Ben Sullivan for helping us learn so much. And a big mahalo to the Hawaii Community Foundation and the Annie Sinclair Knudsen Memorial Fund for making all this possible. Want to know more about KIUC? Check it out at website.kiuc.coop. Want to know more about Hawaii Dairy Farms? Check it out at hawaiidairyfarms.com. Want to know more about Tesla batteries? Check it out at tesla.com slash powerwall. Want to know more about Kauai County? Check it out at kauai.gov. And now, let's take a look at our ThinkTech calendar of events going forward. There's so much happening in Hawaii. Sometimes things happen under the radar and we don't hear much about them. But ThinkTech will take you there. Remember, you can watch ThinkTech on OC16 several times every week to stay current on what's happening in government, industry, academia and communities around the island and the world. ThinkTech broadcasts its daily talk shows live on the internet from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. Then we broadcast our earlier shows all night long and on the weekends. If you missed a show, or if you want to replay or share our shows, they're all archived on demand on thinktechhawaii.com and YouTube. The audio is on thinktechhawaii.com slash radio, and we post all our shows as podcasts on iTunes. See our website for links. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our weekly calendar and live stream and YouTube links, or sign up on our email list to get the daily docket of our upcoming shows. ThinkTech has a high-tech, green screen, First Amendment studio at Pioneer Plaza. If you want to join our live audience or participate in our shows, write to think at thinktechhawaii.com. Give us a thumbs up on YouTube or send us a tweet at thinktechhi. We'd like to know how you feel about the issues and events that affect our lives together in these islands. We want to stay in touch with you and we want you to stay in touch with us. Let's think together. <laughs>
can call in to our talk shows live. While you're watching any of our shows, you can call in to 415-871-2474 and pose a question or make a comment. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of ThinkTech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. Okay, Elise, that wraps up this week's edition of ThinkTech. Remember, you can watch ThinkTech on OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Elise does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more ThinkTech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on ThinkTech, visit ThinkTechHawaii.com. Be a guest or a host, a producer or an intern, and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks so much for being part of our ThinkTech family and for supporting our open discussion of tech, energy, diversification, and global awareness in Hawaii, and of course, energy and sustainability on the neighbor islands. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important weekly episode. I'm Raya Salter. And I'm Elise Anderson. Aloha, everyone. <laughs>